buildings like this one held businesses on the riverfront for over 20 years. Now they sit empty. And the question is, will taxpayers in the city of Peoria like what the city plans to do when the platform goes away? $84 million in road projects are hanging in the balance right now because of the budget impasse. And if lawmakers don't get things together on their end, projects like the one proposed on I-74 could take months to get completed. Well, it's a sleepy Sunday in Washington with many politicians on their summer vacations. But that doesn't apply to those investigating possible Russian interference in the election. Hundreds of gallons of water are spilling out of a broken pipe inside this building. You can hear the water hitting the side of this garage and it's spilling out onto the road right now. And the worst part is there's no word on when Public Works will be here to fix the problem. This is what's left of the Uftering Chevrolet in Washington after a fire broke out last night. Crews were here for hours in the bitter cold trying to battle the flames. Well, there's lots to do when it comes to getting your children ready to go back to school, and eye exams are a part of that growing list. Council has to cut $12 million from their budget at tonight's meeting. The question is, what department is going to feel that cut the most? Boating accidents due to low visibility account for over 13 deaths in the state of Illinois, and now the Coast Guard is stepping in to keep you safe. Dozens of parents came out to Canton High School tonight to learn more about the proposed school funding plan. Canton Superintendent Rolf Severston, along with several others, spoke out in favor of Senate Bill 1. With hours extending at many of their libraries, the Illinois Prairie District Library hopes it gives you an opportunity to read a good book. We've reached out to the owner of 1505 multiple times to try and figure out if there's going to be any time that this apartment will reopen. So far, all of our calls have been unanswered. Yeah, I mean, I know it's raining, but at least we do have the warm temperatures. Look forward to the rest of the weekend. Well, and it's been re really refreshing today. 50s, it felt so oh, much better than the beginning really of this year. It was really great outside. It was nice. Hopefully everyone took advantage of it and oh, spent yeah. it outdoors. I definitely did a little bit. Yeah. All right, awesome. Thanks, Brooke. Okay, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Congratulations.
A quick search on the internet and you'll be swimming in recipes and how-to videos, not for whipping up food, for whipping up sunscreen. These sites may claim to have the formula for sun protection, but Dr. Jessica Krantz says it could actually be a recipe for something a lot worse. You're at risk for sunburn in the short term, but in the long term, you're really at risk for skin cancer. That's in part because there's no way for you to test the effectiveness of the mixture. You have no quality control. You can't determine what the SPF of the product is. You don't even know if those ingredients have any kind of SPF protection. Take zinc oxide, one of the potential ingredients in homemade sunscreen. This mineral protects skin by deflecting the sun's UV rays rather than absorbing them the way chemical-based sunscreens do. While zinc oxide is found in many mineral-based sunscreens available on store shelves. In Consumer Reports' test of store-bought sunscreens, the ones that contain zinc oxide or titanium dioxide or both as active ingredients have been consistently found to be less effective than those that contain the chemical active ingredients. And effectiveness is key. In childhood, one single blistering sunburn can increase the risk of skin cancer by 50%. To minimize harmful sun exposure, Dr. Krantz says you should not only use sunscreen and use it correctly, but also apply a little strategy when heading outdoors. The best protection is to avoid strong midday sun and plan most of your activities earlier or later in the day and to wear sun protective fabric and sun protective clothing, hats and sunglasses in addition to your sunscreen. For Consumer Reports, I'm Andrew Harvey.